Good morning, everyone. My name is Adrian Nyhouse, lead pastor of City Light Church. And today I've got the privilege of sharing the word with you, but I'd just like to open with a word of prayer and then we'll get straight into it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming before you to study your word. Lord, we know that the entrance of your word brings life. And so, Father, I ask today that your word will bring life. Lord, I ask today that as we study your word, as we as we hear it's what's preached, Lord, that you will bring life through that. Father, we ask that you just challenge us. We ask that you shape us. We ask that you convict us if need be. But Lord, stir our hearts because we want to see your name glorified in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. As we look through, uh, as we look through the New Testament or through particularly through the Gospels, uh, the phrase the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are used interchangeably. Uh, but they're actually used, uh, when you look at it, 103 times through the New Testament. 88 of those times are in the Gospels, and of those 88, 77 of them are Jesus speaking. Now, when we say things to people, when we say it once, you might listen. When we say it two or three times, then you might pay attention to it. But when somebody says something 77 times, we need to be paying attention. And I think that's the case here with Jesus. When he spoke on the kingdom of God so many times, we need to sit up and listen and pay attention to what he's actually saying. Uh, I want to look at a few verses uh, just to touch base, to start around uh, the thoughts there. Uh, Matthew 4, 17, after his baptism, it says that from that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The next one is Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. This time Jesus sends the disciples out and he says to them, as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now Jesus told them to say exactly the same thing that he was saying. The message didn't change. We then look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 10. When the disciples asked Jesus to teach them how to pray, one of the things he said was, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and when he spoke about your kingdom come, he wasn't talking about something off in the distance. He was talking about your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. So God's kingdom on earth was part of his plan all along. And the last one I will look at briefly is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first first the kingdom seek the kingdom of god above and beyond anything and everything else now i want you to turn in your bibles to to acts chapter one and we're going to look at just uh, just one verse acts one verse three but uh, a couple of days after easter god challenged me to start reading through acts again and um and this is a time that i wanted to paint uh paint the room that we're currently in there's a wall that was uh there's a bit damaged over time just with use and things in here so we thought we'll give that a a bit of a freshen up and with the patching of the uh, the holes with uh with the sanding back with with giving it a couple of coats of paint when i finished the wall i walked in and i said to robin you know how long that took and she said how long i said took the book of acts and uh, and i was able to sit there and just listen and while i'm working i could just soak up the uh, soak up the word but uh when i got the the very first part as i read acts chapter 1 verse 3 normally when i read acts i'm looking for the holy spirit what the work of the holy spirit is doing but this time, verse 3 really jumped out. And uh, let's just read that together. And during the 40 days after he suffered and died, he appeared to the apostles from time to time, and he proved to them in many ways that he was actually alive. And he talked to them about the kingdom of God. Now picture this. Jesus has lived with the disciples for three and a half years. He's taught them all sorts of things about the kingdom of God. He spent all this time uh, teaching them. He's all of a sudden taken away from them when he was crucified. He then surprises them by rising again because the Bible says they weren't expecting that. Uh, but in the 40 days that Jesus was risen, the 40 days between the day that he rose and the day that he ascended, those 40 days, he spends that time proving to them so that, that he was alive. And the second thing was that he taught them more about the kingdom of God. He didn't just say a little bit. He just went on and on. The kingdom of God was the message he preached. When he came back, his message was still the kingdom of God. And we need to be aware of that. This is something he spoke over and over again. And, and we need to really grab hold of that fact that, that the kingdom of God is what he wants us to know and understand. 
And as I was reading that, I thought, well, if, if the kingdom of God was what he was talking about, what was it he actually said? I, I, I tend to often think that when I see something, I think, what does that mean? How does that work? So I went back through the Gospels and I listed every single time that Jesus actually spoke uh, or uh, yeah, spoke after he rose again, all the things that he said, all the things that were listed. And I was able to categorize them into four main categories. The first one was proof of his resurrection. The second one was confirmation of his lordship. The third one was the commissioning of the church. And the fourth one was the sending of the Holy Spirit. Now with all the different verses that there were, all of those can be condensed down to those four categories. Proof of his resurrection, confirmation of his lordship, the commissioning of the church and the sending of the Holy Spirit. So when Jesus uh, spends those 40 days proving, them, proving to them that he'd risen from the dead, we see that as point one, and the other one was that he spent those 40 days talking to them about the kingdom. So what did he do? He covered the confirmation of his lordship, the commissioning of the church and the sending of his spirit. And that's what the Bible refers to as the kingdom. I'm going to look a little bit more at that but I think it's easy when we, when we think of the kingdom of heaven to, to think of something out there or something that's a way off or it's, it's a, a literal place. Um, but it's not so much a place out there somewhere because when Jesus prayed, when he taught us to pray, he said, your kingdom come. It was supposed to be something that we live with here. But if you look at the word kingdom, Collins Dictionary defines kingdom as a country or region that is ruled by a king or queen and we look at that and say well that's that's obvious uh, but it's not referring to the the country itself uh, the reference is more to the ruling the king or queen rules the country uh, and it literally means a king or queen's domain or region of dominion and when you look at kingdom in the bible one of the definitions says it's not to be confused with an actual kingdom but rather the right authority to rule over a kingdom. Now we need to realize that for a king or queen to have a kingdom, they must have authority. If they don't have authority, they don't have a kingdom. A king can't rule without authority. A queen can't rule without authority. So they must have authority in order to have a kingdom. Uh, and now imagine you lived outside the city walls of Jerusalem under somebody like King David. Uh, you would be living within the kingdom. You'd be living under the king's rule, but you'd be living as part of that kingdom. Uh, if you didn't want to live under the kingdom, then I guess you could just pack up and go. You could move somewhere else. You could move to another place, I guess, to, to live under another kingdom. I don't understand all the rules there, but uh, that's my logical thinking. If I want to move house, say, I can pack up and I can move to another place. Uh, but whatever kingdom you were living under, you were a part of that kingdom. Your life would be influenced by the laws and the culture of that kingdom. Literally, that was your way of life. The kingdom there was your way of life. It dictated everything that you did. And several years ago, uh, I went to the USA with Bernie. We traveled there um, and we, we did some ministry in, uh, in Washington State, uh, went down to Oregon for a conference, and then we went up to Canada. Uh, then the following year, uh, Robert and I, my wife, went to went to Mississippi, and and the one thing that struck me was that even though it was the one country, uh, America, when we were at Washington State, when we were at Oregon, and then we were down at Mississippi, we went across to Louisiana. We saw uh, different cultures. We saw different things happening, and uh, and what I noticed was that some of the laws were different, some of the people were different, the cultures were different, their mannerisms were different, their accents were different. Even though all that was in the same country, everything was different. The way they lived was influenced by the kingdom they lived in. And we look at that and say, well, it's not really a kingdom, but every state has its own set of rules. Every, uh, every state has its own leaders. So in a sense, they were like kingdoms. And, and every different place within America uh, is, is different. You consider New York City, you consider Louisiana, you consider Texas, you consider uh, California, no matter where you go, the, the lifestyle is different, the culture is different, the accent is different, and there's so many things in there that, that were different. And we need to understand that the way of life is part of the reference to that kingdom. It's not just a physical place, 
but it's actually the way of life, not so much from the king's point, but from the subjects, the people who live there under his rule, there's a way of life and they are governed by, by things that happen there. Now, if we go back to Acts 1.3, we see uh, two things. Firstly, he proved in many ways that he was alive. Now, we might ask, well, why is that important? Well, firstly, a king actually has to have, uh, or has to be alive to have a kingdom. You can't be a dead king and still be ruling. You have to be alive to have a kingdom. And, and secondly, the disciples had to know that Jesus was alive because, because it was his kingdom they were preaching. He had to be alive for it to be a kingdom. And they had to know that he was alive so they could continue preaching the kingdom. If he was dead, if he'd gone and he was never coming back, they couldn't preach that there was life in Jesus. They couldn't preach uh, the truth of the kingdom of God. And, and the second thing for us, what we see in Acts 1, is that he talked about the kingdom of God. So it wasn't just that he'd come back to life again. It wasn't just that he was alive, but he continued to speak about the kingdom of God. And, uh, and when we look at that, he wasn't so much referring to the place that he wanted us to live. He was more referring to the way he wanted us to live. Uh, sending the Holy Spirit, uh, when we, and when we understand that, sorry, the, the life that he wanted us to live, the sending of the Holy Spirit, all these things come into play. It makes a lot more sense that it's referring to a lifestyle of the kingdom of God, not just a place. <clears throat> Uh, I want to look at uh, Matthew chapter 28 and Mark 16, which are um, two scriptures referred to as the Great Commission. And uh, what I think is interesting, I was reading something uh, today on the, on the Great Commission, some statistics, and uh, I want to detour a little bit with this, but there was a survey that, uh, that the Barna Group did on the Great Commission, and they asked uh, church-going Christians what the Great Commission was, how many of them knew. And what I was really surprised was that 51% had never heard what the Great Commission was. 6% weren't sure. 25% had heard, but can't remember what it means. So that leaves 83% of Christians either have never heard or are not familiar with the phrase, the Great Commission. Now that may mean that people just aren't using that phrase anymore. Um, but they went on a bit further and they asked people, they gave them a list of five different scriptures and they said, out of these five, we want you to identify what the Great Commission would be. And out of those five scriptures written there in front of them for to look at, only 37% of people were able to get what the Great Commission was. We need to have an understanding of what God has called us to do. We need to be a people that know his word, that know that we're going to live according to his word. We're going to live a lifestyle that honors him and is obedient to him. The kingdom of God that we are supposed to live under isn't just a place the kingdom of God is a lifestyle. The kingdom of God is, is us being commissioned to go and preach the gospel, the Great Commission. Uh, it's us being empowered by the Holy Spirit to change lives for the gospel. That is the kingdom we are supposed to be living under. That is the way of life we are supposed to be living according to. Now, if we look at uh, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, it says, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I love that verse, lo, I am with you always. Uh, that little one word, lo, means you need to know this. You're called to go out and preach the gospel. You're called to go and make disciples. You're called to change lives. But you need to know that you don't do this alone. If you've made Jesus Lord of your life, the Holy Spirit lives in you. If you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, he is superimposed over you. You are empowered by the Spirit to go and make a difference. You do not do this alone. You are not on your own to do this. Living according to the kingdom of God is living under the rule of God. And, and, and the great thing about that is I get to live under his rule. I get to be led by him. I get to have counsel with him. I get to, to worship him. I don't do this alone. If we look at Mark 16, 15 to 18, it says, And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. 
They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. And when you look at those two verses, you think, wow, that's, that's living under the kingdom of God. That we go into all the world, that we make disciples, that we heal the sick, we raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons, all the things the Bible says for us to do are all fruits of us living under the kingdom of God. They're all uh, evidence of us living according to the kingdom God has. That's the lifestyle that he wants us to live. So when you choose to align your life with the principles that God has for you, that is living your life aligned with the kingdom of God. When you're growing in and exercising your faith to become more like the Father, that is you aligning your life with the kingdom of God. When you are preaching the good news of Jesus Christ and making disciples, that is you aligning your life with the kingdom of God. When you begin to speak God's words of truth and promise as a declaration of the authority that he has given you, that is you aligning your life with the kingdom of God. When you begin walking in the authority that God intends for you to live in, that is you aligning your life with the kingdom of God. When you are living your days influenced by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that is you aligning your life with the kingdom of God. Everything we do, that said, when Jesus gave us instruction here and he said, in this word, these are the things I need you to do. This is how I want you to live. When all these things are put in place, that is the kingdom of God. That is us uh, living according to the, the guidelines of the kingdom of God. Uh, in our household, if our kids are here, they know there's certain things that are expected of them. Uh, you can't just walk into my house as a visitor and not come under the authority of my house. And, and we've got to come under the authority of our Father. We've got to live according to the truth of His Word and say, well, this is God's Word. I'm going to live my life according to this. I'm going to honor Him with this. I'm going to read, read His Word. I'm going to study it. I'm going to make it a part of my life because when I go out and preach the gospel, I want to impact people's lives for the kingdom of God. And I don't just impact it for the kingdom of God. I want to live according to the rules of the kingdom, the guidelines of the kingdom, the lifestyle of the kingdom, uh, the leading of the Spirit, so I can live according to the kingdom. That's how I want to live. And, and living under the kingdom of God isn't supposed to be something that's super spiritual or weird. It's supposed to be a lifestyle that points people to Jesus. Now, we can look at people and say, oh, they're, they, they're strange, or that person's weird, and, and that may turn them off. We need to live our life based on the Word of God, but pointing people to Jesus in a way that they go, I want to be just like you. I want to see that Holy Spirit. I want to live my life the way, the way you do, because I want to know who Jesus is. That's the life we're supposed to be living. We're supposed to be living a life that points people to Jesus. And, and too many people are worried about what they might miss out on if they pursue the kingdom of God. But there is no other life we should be living. We should be living according to the kingdom as Jesus commanded us. We should be living a lifestyle that says, this is how I want to please you. I want to do everything you want me to do and everything else that can be put on hold if that's, if that's your desire. But I know the Bible says that God has a plan and a purpose for us. His plan is to prosper us, not to harm us. His plan is to give us a hope and a future. God has a good plan for your life. God has a desire and a dream for your life in a way that, that you will never, ever be able to achieve on your own. So pursue the things of the kingdom of God. And again, if we look at Matthew 6.33, which we read earlier, seek first the kingdom or the lifestyle, the authority of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Again, Matthew chapter 6.10, the disciples came and said, teach us how to pray because they'd been watching him. They'd seen him heal the sick. They'd seen him raise the dead. They'd seen him cleanse the leper. They'd seen him cast out demons. They'd seen him do miracle after miracle after miracle. And what they realized was the one thing Jesus did regularly was that he prayed. He sought God. He came before God and says, and he just spent time with him while everyone else was sleeping. He was often praying. And they said, we see what you're doing. We see the effectiveness of your life. And, and we've, we've identified that the effectiveness of your life comes from spending time with Father. So I'm asking the you that you teach us how to pray. And one of the things Jesus said was, your kingdom come, your way of life come, your authority 
come. They're the sort of things that we want to have here on earth, just like it is in heaven. And that was part of Jesus' prayer. It should be a desire that we're saying, God, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. I want to walk in your ways. I want to live according to your ways. And, uh, and I want to look at those two verses again in, in, Mark, in sorry, Matthew 28 and Mark 16. But because they're both part of the Great Commission, I want to knit them together, shuffle them around a little bit so they make sense. But this gets really exciting when you look at this. And he said to them, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not will be condemned. Teach them to observe all things I have commanded and you need to know I am with you always, even to the end of the age. How awesome is that? We start off with the authority that God's given us. We end with the fact that he walks with us every day. He'll never leave us or forsake us. But he says, these signs will follow those who believe. These signs, we are supposed to be walking uh, in the miraculous. We are supposed to be seeing people healed. We are supposed to be seeing all sorts of things happening. And because those things happen, people say, I want to know who Jesus is. Those things point the attention to Jesus. Those things make people want to know who is this God that you serve. And so by us living a life that matches up with the kingdom of God, that's the sort of life that people are going to be hungry for. That's the sort of life that people are going to want to pursue. Kingdom living is what Jesus equipped us for. And kingdom living is what he wants us to pursue. Uh, when we look at this corona uh, uh, coronavirus, the COVID-19, it's affected so many lives in so many ways. Uh, there's a lot of people that are struggling. There's a lot of people out of work. There's businesses that have closed down. And whilst the government's doing everything they can to support us, we recognise that a lot of people have had their lives influenced. And, and the church is no different. The church has had to close its doors. But that doesn't necessarily mean the church has stopped because we are the church. The church out there is only a building. The doors are closed of the building, but we can still be the church. And in this time of COVID-19, God is expecting us to still live according to the kingdom. He is still expecting us to pray for the sick. The, the sick. He is still expecting us to live. So you can connect with people. You can ring people. You can talk to them over the phone. You can, you can pray for them. You can be a living example of who Jesus is. Uh, particularly when you go to the shops, you might be frustrated. Don't get frustrated. Be polite. Be kind. You reflect Christ in everything you do. The, the kingdom of God needs to be oozing out of you. It needs to be a lifestyle that we live, particularly in this time. And uh, and when we think of the, the prophetic word, last week we had Steve McCracken preaching, and uh, if we think of the prophetic word that he shared, Father wants to take us to a place where our light shines brighter and our light shines further. That's a, that's a really powerful word. God wants to take us to a place. Our Father wants to take us to a place where our light shines brighter and our light shines further. And uh, it's, again, easy for us to look at life and go, oh, we just continue on doing what we're doing. No, if we're seeking God, if we're being led by the Spirit and we're being an influencer, then we can be more and more effective. We're doing our sermon services online now. We know that there's other churches uh, streaming, uh, looking, tuning in to, to see what's going on, to, to be a part of what we're doing. And we're so blessed if you're from another another state or another country, we are so blessed to have you. And, and, and we would say welcome. And, and we, we would pray that God would continue to impact your life and use you to minister life where you go. And that's the beauty of church being online, of church being able to get out and do things outside of the four walls of the church. We are called to be disciples. We are called to make disciples. We are called to live the kingdom of God. So in this time we're in, Rather than living in a place, we need to be living out the kingdom. We need to be living under the, king, the, 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 the king's rule of our father and, and doing what he wants to. And when he says, you need to go out and pray, you need to go and lay hands on the sick, you need to make disciples, you need to do this, then we need to be living our life in a way that brings him glory and honor. I don't want to be a church that goes 
back to normal. I want to be a church uh, that continues to pursue God and continues to seek God. Over the last year and a bit, we've been talking about God birthing something in our church. The God wants to birth something new. And this is a time when we can go, you know what, God? This is a time when something new is happening. So let's not go back for the normal. Let's not settle for what was. Let's push in and say, God, I want to align myself with you. I want to pursue something different. I want to do something that's just going to honor you and, and let the kingdom of God be expanded. Because the kingdom of God isn't supposed to stay with me or you. It's supposed to be advanced. It's supposed to, to grow. We're supposed to see more people come into knowledge and relationship with Jesus Christ. That's our goal. So when Jesus said, uh, live the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's talking about the authority of heaven. He's talking about the presence of heaven. He's talking about uh, Jesus himself being available for us. He's talking about a lifestyle that we're supposed to live. He wants us to be governed by the rules, by the, the guidelines, by the life, by the blessings, by the fruitfulness of heaven. And that's the sort of thing we need to be taking uh, out and beyond here. Uh, I love the last part of what Steve shared, or not the last part, it was something that he shared last week. Um, let your light shine further, 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 and brighter, brighter, brighter. As the kingdom of God is alive in us, then the kingdom of God is going to grow. People are going to see that. Our light for God will shine brighter and further. The impact we have as a church and as individuals, because that word wasn't just for a church, it was actually for us as individuals. God wants you and I to be shining further and brighter for him. The kingdom of God needs to be alive in us. We need to be living according to his ways. We need to be living out the kingdom of God so we can impact other people. And as we finish, I just want to have a time of communion. I think it's it's appropriate that we, we realign ourselves. And, and again, uh, we're sitting in this time between the resurrection of Jesus and the ascension of Jesus. This time frame where we remember what he did, we're sitting in that time. And when Jesus says, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, when he's, when he's preaching the kingdom of God to them, in those 40 days he's there, that's the time frame we're in. So let's use this time to really focus on the kingdom. Let's, let's use this time where we're in this lockdown where it feels like what's going on, we don't know what's happening press into the things of God. Pursue the things of God. Let the kingdom of God advance in your life. And when we look in the Bible, it talks about a body broken for us and the blood shed for us. And as I think about what Jesus did for me, as I think about the, the life that he poured out and the, the things that he taught us so that we can actually be in relationship with him, that's what he wants for us. And, and I was thinking before, like I said, if you live in one kingdom and you don't like the king, you don't want to come under the rulership there, you can leave. You can go somewhere else. But from a spiritual point, we live under the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. But if you don't want to live under that, then the only other kingdom we can live under is the kingdom of darkness. And I think it's interesting if the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God refers to our way of life, then we can just as easily say that our way of life indicates the kingdom that we are living under. Did you get that? Our way of life can indicate the kingdom that we are living under. And so if I'm not living according to the kingdom of God, and there's only one other kingdom, then that's the kingdom that I'm living under. And for some people, you might need to say, well, today I'm actually going to move kingdom. Today I'm going to realign myself. Today I'm going to take this, this biscuit and this juice. I'm going to realign myself with God. I'm going to step out from that kingdom of darkness, which I may have been living under. And I'm going to come back into a place where I'm honoring God with my life, where I'm giving him my best, where I'm going to uh, you know, live my life to please him. And the Bible says when we do something wrong, all we have to do is come before him and say, Father, I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me. And it's as simple as that. The enemy wants to have as many people in his kingdom as he can. But all we need to do is step out, say, Father, I've sinned. I'm asking you to forgive me. And we come back into relationship with him, back into the kingdom of God. And so as we eat this bread and drink this cup, I want today to be a day where you consider what sort of kingdom you're a part of, where you consider the life that you're living, where you consider, have I lived my life in a way that has reflected the kingdom of God? Have I lived my life in a way that has honored Christ? And if not, then just realign yourself back in under the kingdom of God. 
if you need to move, move. Uh, I, I was thinking back when, uh, when we moved house to come down to Tasmania back in 2001, we went through all our belongings, we boxed everything up, we threw some things away, we sold some things. Uh, when you move house, you do some cleanup at the same time. This might be a time for you, this time between uh, Easter, resurrection and ascension when, and, and the sending of the Holy Spirit in this time might be a time for you to just make some adjustments. And so as we eat this bread, as we drink this cup, I'm going to pray and I just ask that you just join me in faith that you align yourself with the kingdom of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for, for a body broken for us. We thank you for blood poured out for us. We thank you for the teaching that you gave us. And Lord, the instructions you gave us to, to live according to your kingdom, to seek the kingdom first above and beyond everything else, Father. And you also said that as we seek your kingdom first, everything else will come into alignment with that. So Father, we just bring everything before you. Father, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. Lord, we choose to bow our knee before you again. We choose to come back in under your, your leadership, under your rule. Lord, we ask that you just continue to work in us, continue to work through us. Help us to honor you with the very best we have because we are only human, Lord, but you never leave us or forsake us and we do everything we do through you. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Let's eat and drink. Father, we thank you for the life that you've given us. We thank you that you've done so much for us. You've so freely laid your life down. I think back to the uh, to the this, even this morning where we remember the Anzacs and we remember the price they paid. Father, we choose to remember you. We choose to remember the person you are. We choose to remember what you have done for us. Lord, I just pray that, that every person today that is in, in the sound of my voice, that you will continue to shape them, continue to mould them, continue to cause them to grow closer to you. Lord, you said, seek first the kingdom, and that is our desire. We want to put you first, and we surrender our lives before you, and we ask you to lead us from here on, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. Have a wonderful week. Make sure you contact people. Make sure you... You ring us and let us know if you've got any testimonies or any prayer requests. Don't do life alone. Even though we're in isolation, don't do this alone. We are, we are blessed people. We are people blessed to be a blessing. So go out, have a wonderful week and give God your best. God bless.